Good day everyone. Welcome to Learn with MN. In this video, we will discuss another clone-related topic in Inkscape called Clone Original Path. If you're not familiar with clones and how they work, we recommend checking out our earlier tutorial, which covers the basics of cloning. You can find the link in the description. The Clone Original Path is a powerful life path effect in Inkscape that allows you to clone an object while giving you more control over specific attributes of the original. A simple clone copies all visual aspects of the original, including transformation and path effects. However, Clone Original Path goes a step further by letting you decide which features of the original object to keep or modify. For example, here we have a clone of this star. If I resize or rotate the parent object, the clone will mirror those changes. Even color changes will be applied instantly to the clone, like this. Now, let's create a clone original of this square. To do this, select the square, go to the edit menu, then clone, and choose clone original path. This creates a clone on top of the original object, with black color. The color is black because the clone original color is set to unset by default. If you try to move the clone, it will snap back to its original position. To move it and access more options, go to the path menu and select path effects or use the shortcut control shift 7. This will open the path effects tab where you'll see the options for clone original. These options make this clone unique. To move this clone, check the box labeled allow transforms. Now you can move the clone freely. Notice that if you resize or rotate the original object, the clone does not change with it. You might be wondering why this clone isn't following the parent object. That's because we haven't defined which attributes or styles of the parent we want the clone to inherit. Attributes like transform, clip path, mask, style, etc. are written in the attribute field, and styles are written in the CSS properties field and the clone original options. To know what attributes and styles an object has, we can check the XML editor. To do this, select the original object, go to the edit menu, and select XML editor. You can also use the shortcut key Control shift x or by clicking this button here. This will show the attributes of the selected object with their values on the right. The style attribute contains the CSS properties of the object. If you're familiar with HTML and CSS, this will be easy to understand. Now, let's say I don't want the clone to inherit any attributes from the parent, but I do want it to inherit the stroke and stroke dash array. For this, I'll go back to the canvas, select the clone original, and type stroke and stroke dash array in the CSS properties field. Each value should be comma separated, and make sure the spelling matches what you see in the XML editor. After entering the values, click the apply button. As you can see, the stroke color and dash array are applied to the clone. Now, if you change the parent object's stroke, it will also update on the clone. However, the fill of the clone can be changed independently because we didn't link it to the parent. Only the properties you specify will be inherited from the parent, the rest can be customized independently, giving you more control. In simpler words, this clone type inherits some properties from the parent, while other properties can be modified independently. Another advantage of the clone original is that you can transform or deform it into a different shape while maintaining its link to the parent object. Because of this flexibility, clone original is useful for creating character animations in sprite sheets. There are some more options here that can help in your creations. This selects the parent object of the clone original, making it easy to identify which object is the base object. This option allows you to link the clone original to a different object that is copied to the clipboard. For example, if we have this clone linked to a circle and want to link it to this rectangle instead, then first copy the rectangle. Now, select the clone and click Relink to Copied. As you can see, the clone is linked to the rectangle, and if you use Select Original, it will point to the rectangle, not the circle. The shape drop-down menu defines how the shape of the clone will change based on the original object. Let's take this object as an example. Its original shape looks like this. With no shape selected, the clone won't follow any shape changes made to the original object. 
it can be edited freely without staying linked to the original. Except for no shape, the other three options of shape will not show the changes we made to the clone. It will adapt the shape of the original and will be changed if we change the original. Before moving forward, let's apply two path effects on this object. One is spline to smooth the corners and the second is offset. Now the original shape looks like this after path effects. If you select Spiro Orb Spline only, the clone will only inherit the Spiro Orb Spline effect but not any other path effect. In our case, you can see it only inherits the Spline effect, but not the offset. With LPE we'll change the shape to the original and apply all path effects from the original object to the clone. Now, the offset is applied to the clone as well. Without LPE we'll change the shape of the clone to match the original but won't apply any path effects of the original object. That was all for this video. If you have any queries, feel free to write in the comments section or contact us on our website, its link is in the description. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon, so you don't miss any updates. Thank you for watching.